people in Gaza have been driven into the corners of the enclave. Life now lived in temporary cities erected around functioning hospitals. At the Gaza European Hospital, people camp outside the emergency department because there's not enough room inside, not enough space for the wave of suffering seen and experienced on the Strip. On the second floor, there's a five-year-old boy who was hit by a grenade. A fragment passed through his eye and lodged in his brain. But that's just part of Moomin's story. His brother and sister watched it all. It was lunchtime. We were sitting down. 11-year-old Ahmed Hatab was in the kitchen when Israeli soldiers broke into the family home. They raided our house and they shot our mum and dad. Then they started shooting at us. His sister, Buthena, is nine. We went to another room, hiding from the soldiers. They started banging on the door and then they blew it up. In the first week of December, the Israel Defense Forces launched the second phase of their ground invasion in Gaza, targeting the southern city of Khan Yunus. It operates as the headquarters, it said, of senior Hamas leadership. The Israelis deployed thousands of troops and began what they called the most intense battle of the war. Eleven members of the Hatab family lived less than two kilometers north of the center of Khan Yunis in a suburb called Mahata. Their residence was surrounded by suburban homes, gardens, and grey-roofed greenhouses. The local college lies across the square. The area was consumed by fighting in early December. These pictures show the Hamas Khan Yunis Brigade returning fire in the city's northern suburbs. On December 7th, Father Mohammed Hatab called his brother, a doctor, to alert the Red Cross. Their house had been surrounded by Israeli armor. His brother used WhatsApp. He said that the tanks behind the house and excavator destroyed the near house. It's very difficult to move without permission. This is Mohammed's brother, Omar Hatab, a pediatric surgeon at the Gaza European Hospital. My brother called me and he said, talk to anybody who delivered us from there because it's very difficult. The situation was very difficult, shots uh, around the house. So I went to Red Cross and talk with them. Uh, I was very, very worried. Increasingly alarmed, Dr. Omar tried the Red Cross the following day. I called my brother and he said, the tanks around the house can't move at all. It's complicated. Mohammed's son, Moomin, has cerebral palsy. Moving him is difficult, and they wanted to notify the Israelis in advance. On WhatsApp, the Red Cross was reassuring. Their representative said, we've ensured that the houses would not be bombed or destroyed at night and in the future. Their confidence was badly misplaced. These images were posted by the Israelis in mid-December. We see troops applying overwhelming force in residential areas surrounding the Hatab family's home. On December 15th, IDF soldiers stormed their house. The children's aunt, Dua Hatab, says she was in the kitchen when the troops came in. They knocked down the front wall and entered the house. We were sitting down having lunch at the time. Then my brother Mohammed was shot. He was at the front, waving a white flag. A grenade was thrown into the crowded kitchen, injuring Mohammed's wife. Hind. Family members say a soldier then shot and killed her. The device blinded Moomin in his left eye. Israeli soldiers found his brother and sister, 
hiding in the bedroom. They were interrogating us, asking us to show them the tunnels and to tell them where the resistance fighters were. Then they gave us a white flag and told us to walk down Salahuddin Street. Their neighborhood had been turned into a war zone. This picture, taken on December 16th, one day after the IDF entered their home. Houses have been destroyed, trees and greenhouses obliterated. The ground chewed up by tank tracks and Israeli earthworks. The local college had been levelled and an IDF base thrust into the district to the north. The surviving family members walked through that battlefield, reaching Gaza European Hospital the following day. Every time the children cried, someone shot at them, they said. Now, Buthena sits amongst the tents with her coloured pencils. Her favourite colour? Pink, she says. Both she and brother Ahmed struggle to speak of their ordeal. Their aunt and uncle are busy now, learning to care for their disabled nephew. They say Moomin cries all night. They don't know how to make him happy. They've lost their father and mother in one day, at the same time in front of their eyes. This is a really difficult thing. No one can cope with this. No one can. We provided the IDF with a detailed description of timings, events and coordinates of the Hatab family home. It declined to comment. The Red Cross said responsibility for protecting civilians lies with the parties to the conflict. Robbed of their parents, robbed of their home. Three orphans in Gaza left to question the incomprehensible. John Sparks, Sky News. See them.